So welcome back to this series on the Port Swigger Web Academy. If you remember the last time we were checking out host header injection, and now we're going to get, you know, like I like to do on this channel, we're going to get hands-on with this stuff, and we're going to actually be using uh, host header injection to carry out a password reset poisoning attack. Now, before I get into demonstrating that, I want to give you guys this basic overview because I think they do a really good job of explaining uh, what the vulnerability is and how we can exploit it. Uh, I found the lab pretty simple to solve after looking at this here. So basically what we have is, um, you know, password reset poisoning. And it's a technique uh, where the attacker manipulates a vulnerable website into generating a password reset link, pointing to a domain under their control. This behavior can be leveraged to steal secret tokens required to reset arbitrary users' password uh, passwords and ultimately com uh, compromise their accounts, right? Because if you can change their password, something you know, obviously you can log in at that point. So you have the basic diagram here. This is the flow of it, if you will. So if you know the victim's uh, username or email address, then, you know, usually sites provide an ability, like if you forgot your password, all you have to do is supply the email or the username and then hit reset password. And what we're going to do is before we send this to the vulnerable site, we're going to intercept that request and change the host header to our server, our malicious server, right? And because in this case, the vulnerable site is actually using this host header, which if you remember from the last video in this series, you can't trust that uh, header because it is manipulatable, controllable by the user. You know, all we have to do is simply proxy it and we're able to demonstrate that, right? So the vulnerability ultimately is that the website is just trusting this host header. It's not doing any kind of validation, any kind of whitelist or anything like that. And it's using this host header whenever it sends the actual link. That's how it's building the link. It's going to say HTTPS colon slash slash host header value slash password slash reset question mark token equals. And then it's going to generate the token and send that, right? It's going to set. So basically what's going to happen is the vulnerable website is going to send the email to both to Carlos. And as soon as Carlos clicks on the, uh, the link to, you know, what do what he thinks is resetting the password, it's actually going to send that link to our malicious server. We're going to grab the token and then we can use that token to actually reset Carlos's password. So in the lab here, Carlos is automatically going to be is set up to click on all of our links. So in the real world, we might have to use some kind of clever social engineering to entice Carlos to click on this link and thus send it to our server. But uh, this will happen automatically here in this case. And so that's basically what they're explaining here. So yeah, let's let's get right into it. So this is the lab here. This is the website. I have Burp Suite over here. I am going to turn Intercept on in a second, not just yet. So if I click my account, we know the username is Carlos, right? So if we say forgot password, I'll go to, go to exploit server. So I have that here. This is my exploit server. So this is our host name that we're going to need to put in the host header. Not the slash exploit or any of that, just the host name itself. No protocol information, nothing. So once we do that, what we'll do is we will turn on intercept and we will make sure that our BERT proxy is running here and we will enter the username Carlos and hit submit. That's going to intercept this post request here that we just made. And now see right here, this host, we want to change it to our malicious site. So I'll paste that in right there and forward the request. And now I can turn intercept off. So that should have sent the proper link to Carlos and he'll click on, he'll be clicking on it on his end. And once he does that, as soon as we check the access log, we should see the temporary token right here. So forgot password, temp forgot password token equals this value here. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. And all I need to do at this point is to put that in here. 
and it takes me to the new password page. So I'll make the password. I'll just say I am Carlos as the, uh, the new password. Hit submit. And now if I click my account, I should be able to log in with those credentials. So Carlos, I am Carlos. And we have solved the lab. We've logged in as Carlos. So pretty interesting vulnerability here. Uh, definitely one that I need to look for more often. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people probably wouldn't use the host header, I would hope. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. I, this is not one I normally check for. Let me know in the comments section below if you are a pen tester and you check for this a lot. Um, but yeah, it does rely on the host header being used in the generation of the link here. That is the ultimate vulnerability. That's the ultimate reason that the vulnerability exists. So if you're a developer, definitely keep that in mind as well. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If so, uh, hit the like button and subscribe as well if you haven't already. Definitely helps out. And uh, yeah, if you are eager to see more videos, we're getting hands-on exploiting stuff. Check out the what you need to know for OSCP videos on screen right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.